Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the video series where we give our patrons and you advice on how you can improve your miniature painting. We've had some great submissions this week, so let's jump in and have a look at them. Okay, first up we have a World Eater Berserker painted as part of the Christmas box from last year. For a box art style, what do you think? Painting credit goes to my buddy, Vike. So I really like what your friend has done with this. I think uh, it's very sharp, which is good. Um, I think uh, overall it's executed really, really nicely. Um, there's a couple of things I probably, it's, it's more so opinionated things than actually factual things. I think it's a very clean miniature. Everything is painted nicely. There's it's full opacity. There's no sort of patchiness, like it doesn't look rough. Um, there's a lot of good things on the miniature. Um, I think adding a bit more interest because obviously corn berserkers and the color scheme is very ostentatious obviously bright red armor you've got loads of gold you've got loads of obviously different things that are on the miniatures um i think something that's just really going to add a, an extra level of interest to the model is like all the rivets rather than just leaving them as gold i'd actually suggest painting them as silver it'll add an extra color to that specific area of the miniature so the gold um, just add a bit of contrast on there, obviously, with adding adding some sort of sh shading round, obviously, the rivets and things that actually look quite good. Um, certain things on the model, like, for example, I know, you zoom, uh, I know we're looking at the knee pad now, but, like, you could theoretically do the knee pads, leave those ones as gold, so it makes the knee pads look a little bit more ornate because the rivets or the studs are in gold. Uh, other ones that just hold on the trim of the armor could potentially be silver. I think that's quite a good way of doing it. Um the other thing I would say is, uh, I say gold, but obviously it could be bronze or brass as well, obviously, because corn has obviously brass brass denoted in its color scheme. What I would probably recommend that you do is if it is brass, I'd possibly recommend uh, doing some verdigris on there. And what that will do is that because of color theory, uh, uh, sort of like turquoisey colors or dark blue colors that are in the sort of like the where sort of like the verdigris sort of like collects and gets this like lots of tonal variants on verdigris. Um, I think that you could add a lot of interest, an extra level of sort of attention to the model by adding verdigris around sort of different areas, typically in the lower portions and lower recesses where moisture would collect or sort of like detritus that's built up. Corn Berserker probably would be too busy slaughtering everything around him to care about cleaning his armor. So um, so I'd probably recommend adding those two things on there. And as I said, by color theory, that goes that sort of turquoisey kind of like color um, or greeny blue that, that Verdigree tends to be in some areas would actually work really, really well with the red armor color. Um, and it just, as I said, adds an extra level of interest, which would be great for the piece. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think overall the, the key thing, like you said, is everything is blocked in like really, really nice and clean, isn't it? Like the base coats are really, really nice and smooth. It, there's no like bleeding edges into anything else. You've got really, really nice uh, recess shading going around here as well. Yeah. Um, my biggest sort of bit of feedback for this is is not necessarily actually the the painting execution itself, um, but it's perhaps some of the the color choices similar to what you said. Um, for me, I think the the red is just a little bit desaturated, and I think that's in part due to the the color choice for the edge highlights. This is looking like sort of a, a more like pinky red to me. Personally, again, this is just preference, but personally, I would have gone much more towards like an orange, something a lot more vibrant and punchy and saturated, yeah. just to make that red a lot more vibrant and stand out. Um, and I think similarly to what you said, the the metallics could add a little bit of depth with them. Um, it's very, very hard to tell from this photo if there are painted highlight edges or if that's the, the finish reflection from the metallic paint itself. It does look like you've painted some highlights on the metallics here. Yeah. I would say, again, just going brighter and, and I would go gone for like almost like a really, really bright silver. Um, especially on like some of the really, really sharp edges, just for that contrast, just to make everything look really, really nice and sharp and angular. And I think it kind of looks like almost more aggressive as well. Yeah, definitely. Because it'll be very much fitting and in keeping with the miniature as well if you do that. The, the other little thing that I think that could be quite interesting, obviously it's got quite a lot of metal on the model in that sort of like the different sort of hoses and pipes and braces and all those, like the pet sort of the, the power cable covers and things like that. Um, I mentioned obviously about sort of doing verdigree and things like that, but the, the grenade on the hip, I know it's metallic and there's nothing wrong. This is purely an opinionated statement. Painting that that grenade in a stereotypical green color, like a green grenade color, maybe a desaturated, slightly desaturated, it doesn't have to be like like an emerald green. It could be like a desaturated, like a military green or something like that. Um, I think that would just add a lot of visual interest to that grenade. It will work because of color theory, because obviously green being a complementary color of red. Um, and it will just frame that, the, the red around it will just help frame that grenade a little bit better and just really make it stand out when it comes to looking at the details and someone looking at the model. Yeah, I think to extrapolate on that as well, I think you could kind of just apply that as a, as a rule for everything. Um, this is something that we speak about a little bit is the odds on every single silver uh, on this model, especially when they're from like different things. So like the, the the idea that the magazine on the weapon would be the exact same shade of silver 
as on the pipes on the chest. And that also happens to be the exact same shade of silver as yeah. the silver on, on the chain mail between the legs. I think just mixing it up, like people go, oh, I want it to be silver. And then there's a tendency to just use the exact same paint for everything. It can be very, very subtle and nuanced changes. But I think that using different shades of silvers, of golds, of bronzes, it, it just helps sort of denote different details as being like a little bit more separate. Yeah. Like for example, this little um, sort of icon ha here hanging off the waist, because it's the exact same gold as everywhere else, it kind of gets a little bit lost. It just sort of blends in as part of the piece. Yeah. That's an opportunity to, even if you did want it to be that color, just using a different paint, just to make it slightly different shade. You could use different washes on it, get a different sheen. You could even use different colors to highlight it. Mm -hmm. It just makes it stand out just a little bit more and it helps you to notice all of the individual details on the miniature because it's a very, very detailed model. Yeah. Um, but it kind of starts to look a little bit simple when everything's painted in that way, just because when you're looking at it, those individual details don't pop out to you. No, definitely. Yeah, 100%, I um, agree. Yeah, but overall, like fantastically painted model. And uh, thank you very much for submitting it. Okay, next up we have Eminem who has said, figured I'd post this Astarath. I rushed it at the end around the base and on the axe to get it entered for a friendly Discord competition. Feel free to rip it apart. I definitely tried harder to keep everything cleaner than usual, but I definitely got lazy with some of my highlights. And honestly, rounded edges like on the top of the wings give me a hard time. I'm not exactly sure how to approach it. So overall, to start off with, I think you've done a great execution on the model for the time frame that you've told us that you've had it to do it. I think the axe looks great. The sort of colors and tones you've got on that sort of like energized power weapon looks great. Um, overall, like the models, like the execution of it in the sense of like the refinement and like how neatly blocked in the colors are and the color placement. I think you've done a really good job. Very nice and smooth as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and that is not the Blood Angel bias showing through, I promise you. Like <laughs> it, it gen genuinely, I think you've done a really, really good job on this. Um, I'm going to tackle the thing that you mentioned as a, as a bit of an issue uh, that you had or that you're, you're dealing with at the moment, which is like the rounded edges. Um, now, I had a good look at the model and obviously at the photos, and I think one of the things that becomes kind of a little bit evident possibly is that you've placed the highlights on, but they go from the point where you started and then obviously just cut off and finish. And I think one of the things with that is potentially what that tells me is that when you're doing the highlight stage, you're not alternating or changing the position of the model. Um, obviously, with a brush stroke, as you do the brush stroke and you're using the brush, there's a, an area of movement that you have control within and then when it reaches outside of that what tends to happen is then the person will stop um, what I actually advocate that you do is that you change the model at that point and then reset the hand back to where it's comfortable and continue that will hopefully give you the opportunity to do full strokes whether it doesn't matter how many times you have to do the tilt and move the model and then do a new start point on the on the edge that's fine um, but it would hopefully mitigate a lot of these these sort of rounded corner edges where you're having a bit of a problem at the moment. Give that a try. Just remember, like, make your life easier. Move the model. Keep your brush hand positioned exactly the same. You shouldn't be doing some kind of weird straining and, like, leg on the desk to get execute the highlight, you know. So <laughs> That's a lot of why we talk about sub-assemblies as well. It's just making your life easier in terms of, like, handling and manipulating the model. Because the easiest yeah. thing to do to, to paint to, to your fullest ability with your hands and your dexterity is rather than making your hands have to bend to awkward positions, make move the model, like yeah. hold the model differently. Um, obviously, it's a piece of plastic, so he's not really too concerned with whether he's upside down <laughs> no. or not. So it's, it's, that's part of why I like two things in sub-assemblies personally, yeah. so I can get just access everywhere. And my hand can always be in the perfect painting position. And then when I need to get into an awkward area, rather than having to bend my hand, it's moving the miniature around. Um, maybe doing that to an extent. The, the rounded edges are a little bit difficult because... Funny enough, they're almost like doing freehand at a certain point it because you've not yeah. really got any anything to guide you. Yeah, totally. Um, so it can be difficult. One thing to bear in mind is if you're struggling to get those edges as sharp as you are elsewhere on the model where you've got like an actual physical edge to paint onto, um, is to consider cutting back in with the base color. Yeah. So paint the thinnest line that you can with that highlight of gray and then switch back to the black base coat and then just paint along that edge just to sort of sharpen it back up. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Now, I'm going to comment on the base with the caveat that you did tell us you rushed it, which is totally understandable when you've got a deadline. Um, I don't normally sort of like encourage rushing, but if you're, you you really want to present something, then obviously go whole hog. I, again, I can't really be, be uh, I can't really say that when I've been painted in hotel rooms the night before the week or the morning of. So um, the base looks, looks really good. The colors you've used, it's nice and neutral toned. Obviously, you painted the Death Company helmet black, which is great. You painted the gem on there. So you've had a bit of time to add a little bit of embellishment to it, which I think is good. There's a bit, quite a bit of tonal variance on there as well. I think really like adding some like tufts and some just other tones on there just to break up the base a little bit, I think will actually help 
compensate for the time that you said you you went through it really quickly. Um, I don't think you've done like a bad job on the base at all whatsoever. It, you know, it's it's a it's a good base that has tonal variants. You've got a bit of interest on there with the details that you painted. Yeah, some toughs and some things like that. You could maybe go in with the next stage highlight and be just be a bit more refined and careful and just pick out certain areas. Maybe do another highlight stage on the helmet and put a couple of little dot catch lights on the gem on the forehead of the blood of the death company uh, helmet. Little things like that would just add a bit of more interest, and it will just make the person reading it see that you've given that the same care and attention that you've done on the miniature, you know, and balance both together. Um, that's really kind of my feedback on the base. Uh, one final thing to note on the painting um, for me is just in terms of the uh, sort of lighter colours, so like the bone on the knees, uh, the purity seal, and on the face. Um, I think to me, this looks like uh, just sort of the all over wash approach to painting, um, which I think is perfectly fine, um, but that can be quite difficult to pull off with with lighter colors and it tends to look stained and perhaps a little bit dirty even. Um, I would consider with with sort of brighter colored details that you're trying to go for like on the, on the mask on the front, uh, on the parchment and things like that, is to just consider doing a, a either no shading and then just working in your highlights and the transitions through your highlights or if you are going to do shading, do very, very carefully, sort of not necessarily black lining, but just fine recess shading specifically where you want it, rather than the, you know, washing all over and then sort of reestablishing the base coat and whatnot. I think that helps just give it sort of a cleaner finish, stops you from getting that kind of like dirty look that you sometimes yeah. get. And typically the pigments are quite big with lighter color paint, so you end up kind of overworking the paint and getting texture where you otherwise might not with other colors. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think maybe just reconsider the approach to how you've painted those. Um, and as well, like just consider color choices. Like it's obviously easier and quicker to use similar colors for similar things. But I think for me, like the parchment's like a little bit dark for what I would be looking for. Um, maybe the, the tone is like just a little bit off. Um, and then the fact that it's the same colors as the face mask to me just sort of looks like a bit of a shortcut yeah, rather yeah. than maybe a color choice that I would have used. Um, so maybe consider using, even if they are going to be similar colors, Things like that do just help establish the different details and make the model more visually interesting. Mm -hmm. Just something to consider going forward. Um, really nicely painted overall, like James said. Uh, all the details are blocked in really, really nicely. The metallics look great, I think. Um, the wings overall, I think, look really, really nice. It's nice that you've done like the blending effect on the on the oh, axe there as well. Um, so great piece. I think you probably know some of the areas that are some of your weaker points there. Um, that's just some pointers to take with you on the next model. Okay, finally, we have Chip Mercury, who has submitted a custom Grey Knights scheme that he calls the Burnished Knights. So this is a really cool scheme. Uh, I've not seen Grey Knights in red armor before, like a reddish, brownish, kind of burnished armor, as you, as you call them with obviously their name, uh, which I think is great. And I really like the fact that you've used green for the purity seals, because I think that, that contrasts the red armor or the brownish tones quite nicely, which is which is really great. Now, I'm going to just say that, obviously, I know you mentioned this is done in a more of like a snapshot uh, style. So I, I, I guess this is probably done more for sort of like a gaming purpose, for example. Um, but there's a few things that we want to suggest and talk about, which will just help... Uh, add a little bit of extra interest to the model and also just give it a little, a little bit more sort of like readability when someone's looking at it, if that makes sense. Um, and, and I'm going to start off with the, the the thing that I love doing, which is purity seals. I think you could easily add quite a, a lot of scripture and text and stuff onto those just to really sell them for what they actually are sculpted as. Um, again, like I always say, these models are plastic before you do anything with them or anything to them. So like you, you're job as a painter is to bring those things to life and, and make someone looking at them read them for what they're sculpted to be um so just adding a bit of script on there i think will work really well you could put a little name or something on the side of the gun on the scroll on the side of the gun you can put wrath or death or something on there that works it's, 40k it's, appropriate <laughs> it's so, nice now as well because they actually have started giving you transfers for that in some of the marine kits yeah, so definitely. even if you're not confident in your brush control to execute that um, there is a lot of like text and scrolls and things like that in the some of the newer uh, space marine transfers as well yeah definitely the next thing to have a look at would be something that I just noticed from looking through the photo. I think uh, the golds are really nice and vibrant, which is good. But I think like there's some areas where the gold isn't at full opacity, so it might be a little bit thin potentially. Um, if you look at the just at the, the sort of where the sword is, just beneath sort of like the power power generator on the for the blade, that sort of like upside down crown shape it looks like there's a little bit of like a, a darker tone on there which potentially looks like it's not been fully blocked in uh, but behind the parchment obviously we can't see that but there's some gold on there as well and that looks a little bit patchy as well um, so i think it's just something to be conscious of and really when you're applying metallics you want to make sure that you get a really good solid base coat so that all the work that you do with toning it on top of it just doesn't kind of show where it's not been uh, sort of painted uh, it's fully opaque if that makes sense 
Um, I think for me, some like really quick final steps that you could do just to sort of seal and finish this off as well um, would be actually in regards to the pacing. Um, I think like really, really quick, simple things. Um, adding a pupil to the eye, I think could make that look a lot more like realistic and finished. Yeah. Um, as well as that, base rims, got to say it, like a, a finished, smooth, full opacity color blocked in base rim, whatever your color of choice is, <laughs> having a base rim painted is, is really, really important because it helps give a model that like finished, presented look. Yeah. And it, it, for me, it's it's like almost like a final step to take a model from looking like a work in progress to saying, right, okay, this is finished now. This is how I'm presenting it. No, totally. I think just like little things like that, just just adding and, and doing that are really, really quick. Because obviously like you're saying this is in the slap chop style. So presumably like James said, it's for, for gaming times of the essence. That's totally understandable. But things like that, I think, are such a tiny, tiny investment of time. Yeah, correct. But add a significant value in terms of the finished look. As well as that, just some small other little things like uh, armor ribbing. I'm not 100% sure if this has been blocked in fully on the elbow or not. Things like that just to help segment out all of like, the little details. I think once you get a model to a state like this where it's like could be called done, I think just spending like an extra two, three, four, five minutes just on those tiny little yeah. bits and details that... While, you know, it might be easy to overlook in the painting process, especially when you're trying to be quick and efficient, I think those little things is like what pushes it over the edge. It's that like last 5%. 100%. So in terms of time, invest, time investment, it's very, very quick and easy. Because um, we're not saying like, you know, go in and do some crazy glowing effects and, on this and like blend and power source and all that. Um, it's just like little things that you can add. So like I say, base rim, pupil, like James said, little bits of like text on the purity seals and things like that. You can maybe do like a little dot catch light on the lens. You could add like one tiny little extra bright highlight stage to some sharp corners of the armor to like draw attention to the face. You could add like some brighter sort of orange highlights, things like that. Just tiny little things I think that you could you could add um, as like a final stage, like a final pass over the models. Um, in my experience, that's really helped to sort of sell the finished look of a model um, beyond the painting level that it necessarily is. But yeah, overall, a really great model uh, with some really good color choices. I think I hope those little extra bits will just really add a little bit more onto there for you, and uh, and just just consider those things when you do other painting in the future, and like when you do maybe other ones of these. You know, that's something definitely to uh, to uh, to consider. And you've done the good thing choosing a black base room. Okay, well, on that note, a massive thank you to everyone for submitting for this episode of Critique Clinic. If you're watching along and you'd like your miniatures featured on a future episode for me and James to give you some advice on, then check the link in the description of this video to find a link to our Patreon. And as well as Critique Clinic, you'll also gain access to hundreds of high quality PDF and video tutorials, which are updated every single week. We have a variety of techniques on there from foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. You'll also get some bonus podcast content and some other great benefits. So check the link for that. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thank you very much. See you next time. See you around.